Hey everybody, psychic and medium Danielle Agnew here to discuss the tenets of fear. You may be noticing that fear has been used as a pretty hefty marketing tool by many, many outlets, not for five years, not for 10 years, not for 20 years, not for hundreds of years, but for thousands and thousands of years. Fear, fear, the big scary illusion that everything's going to hell in a handbasket. Well, I got news for you. None of that is true. Okay, and until we stop responding to fear as if it is a truth instead of just simply a perception, we're going to keep falling into these weird manipulatable holes that all of these folks who want to control crowds are using fear to actually manipulate perception. Here's the deal. Biological fear is real. Okay, it's in our DNA strands. So if I'm swimming in the ocean and I see a shark fin, I'm going to freak out. I'm going to back off. My biology is going to say, girl, that shark's going to eat you. Get out of the water. Because I've had thousands of other people before me get eaten by sharks. So that's in my DNA. I live in the Gallatin Valley. It's gorgeous here. If I wander upon a bear, my biological fear is going to kick in and say, you best not go hug that. I mean, honestly, I live right over the hill from Yellowstone Park, and there are people every year that get mauled by wild animals because they think they're park attractions. Somewhere, their biological fear didn't kick in. Back in the old days, those deer people would have just simply been eaten, and they would no longer be in the genetic chain. So, thank God we have park rangers. However, Psychological fear and biological fear are two different things. And it's important to understand how we're being manipulated through fear. Because during this time frame of the feminine, that's our entire lesson. How do we get to see fear as a teacher, not the enemy? Seriously, think about this a minute. Have you ever watched the news and gotten really afraid that the world was going to hell in a handbasket? Maybe you're somebody that thinks, oh my God, the white supremacists are taking over. Or maybe you're somebody who thinks, why are these weird heathen charlatan heretic psychics all over YouTube? Where is God in the world? Maybe you're somebody who just tunes out because the whole thing has just gotten a little ridiculous. Here's why. Fear triggers the amygdala. That's our fight or flight instinct in the brain. So if I'm somebody, just say, who wants to control masses and I want to keep your frontal cortex, which is the reasoning center of the brain, out of the conversation because see if my frontal cortex gets involved, we're actually going to be rational with one another. If I want to control you as a creeper who is trying to run the world in a creepy way, I need to be constantly triggering your amygdala. Your amygdala is the fight or flight instinct. So I need to keep you jumping like, like a crazy little flea on top of an angry dog so that that frontal cortex doesn't kick in and say, hey man, we probably should just sit down and have a conversation. Oh no, the amygdala's in there going, I need to stock up beans, I need to stock up ammo. Oh my God, the world's ending, ah! Yeah, oldest trick in the book. So world, if we want to embrace the feminine time frame, we must learn to deprogram ourselves from having our amygdala triggered all the time. We must sit with our fear and ask it to be our teacher. If I really believe, say, that white supremacists are taking over the world, then I would need to sit with myself and ask myself, why do you no longer believe in the power of love? Why do you no longer believe in the power of education? And then underneath that, I'd have to ask myself, why have you allowed yourself to be so disempowered? There it is. Why have we allowed ourselves to be disempowered? Why have we allowed ourselves to be triggered like a little flea on the back of an angry dog, to have our amygdala fire off like crazy? Here's the kind of creepy jazz hands ending. Because fear is a powerful and free drug. When we are triggered like that, we have endorphins that rush through our body. We all of a sudden feel alive. We can feel our fingertips. We can feel a sense of purpose because we're angry because actually we're super afraid. It's a free drug. Think about this. How many people do you know that go through their lives and they flip and hate their existence. I mean, let's just be real here for a minute. They can't stand their marriage. They can't stand their job. They think their kids are ingrates. How many people do you know whose only passion in life is being rageful or angry or afraid? 
How about thousands? How about millions? Because we have taught people, especially here in America, that we cannot be fulfilled within. We have taught people that the only way that they can ever be fulfilled is by something outside of themselves. Buy that house, buy this pretty set of lipstick, buy those great shoes, buy that fancy slick car. She'll go out with you for sure. How many times have we been programmed that what we need is outside of us? We have not only generations in America, but generations over the millennia of people believing that they do not matter unless they have wealth, status, land, something huge around them. So when you talk about the fear drug being the only rush that most people get, there's a reason for it. However, if we're going to get through this feminine time frame, if we're going to give up the drug of fear that makes us feel alive, in lieu of something else that really does make us feel alive, like connecting in love, like bringing in a great new world that's gonna be amazing for everybody, or we're not struggling because we're angry, we are actually coming together because we're full of joy, we gotta kick the fear habit, people. It's a necessary thing. So, this week when you go forward and you feel yourself getting triggered, maybe it's by Fox News, maybe it's by MSNBC, maybe it's by some friend at the water cooler, if, if those even still exist anymore, who really wants to go on about everything negative they heard in the world. When this happens, take a step back and look at them and say, wow, you are really working that amygdala for a personal high today. It's no different than somebody who might be using some sort of a drug to get them through their day. Fear. Instead, when you encounter this, here's your homework. Step forward and introduce a solution. Introduce something that's beautiful. Well, you know, the government, the world, blah, white supremacist, gee. Yes, that's all creepy. When you hear that time and time again, bring in, you know what's interesting? I was in my neighborhood and I have this neighbor who actually came forward and built a playground on his own dime for everybody in the entire neighborhood. And he used recycled materials. How cool is that? Watch the response of the person who uses fear as a drug. They might put a crosshair on you and get really crispy. They might get mad at you. That's how you know that they're using fear like a drug. Think about this. Whenever you interrupt a drug user's cycle, they get really nasty. So we can have an interesting social experiment by introducing solutions in love. The people who get violently angry at you because you don't want to participate in their amygdala triggering, you can tell they are actually addicted to that chemical response in the brain. So let's start introducing a more powerful chemical response in the brain, the dopamine rush that we get off of connection and love. We just haven't been trained to receive that as a species for a very long time. A very wise friend of mine once said, you can market fear as love, but you cannot market love as fear. It's a true thing. So think about that. And when you go forward in this week, recognize, are you using fear as a drug? Are you getting high on your freakouts because maybe you're just bored in your life or bored in your marriage or bored in your job? I mean, I know this is gonna probably trigger a lot of people and I'm probably gonna get a lot of nasty comments on this video. That's okay. Because if we don't shake ourselves out of this fear drug necessity, if we do not shake ourselves out of this stasis, then we're just gonna continue down the road we're down and that's pretty much a bunch of sheep who are super controllable by having our amygdala triggered. I love you all. And our capacity to change this world is vast, immediate, and imminent. So let's all work on our own triggers, our own teachers, and let's come into this time frame with an incredible set of solutions because we've got this. When you let that limbic system in the middle of the brain and the frontal cortex do the communicating, we can accomplish anything. And most importantly, hook that up with the heart. Because without heart, the head means nothing. Have a great fear-free week. And just see how you're feeling at the end of it.